Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, we're going to praise God anyhow. Let's stand together. We want to uh, have prayer tonight. Uh, you know, this COVID thing is just going to be a deal. And uh, we're going to have folks that have to quarantine and uh, maybe miss some church if they're exposed. So it's just part of the package for a while. But the Lord's going to be with us. He's going to keep us. And uh, we're going to keep living for God. Amen. you got to make up your mind. You're going to live for God. Everything's not smooth. It's bumpy. There's all kind of distractions. And this is exactly the time that the Lord comes. In an hour when you think not. So you got to keep your eye on the prize and keep focused, keep focused on living for God and being ready for the coming of the Lord. We want to pray uh, for Sister Swank. She had to go to her brother's funeral and she was on a plane. Is she here tonight? There she is. And I didn't know if you was going to stay home or not, but I'm glad you came. I told her, she said, well, should I come or not? Because you don't. Know, she had to ride on a plane. She didn't want to infect nobody. So I said, come if you're well. I'll leave that up to you. Brother Vu, um, his whole family's not here tonight. Uh, one of his co-workers has had to take the test, so he felt like that they should stay home until. So we've been through this, and we're going to see people have to uh, be cautious. I want, you to, I want you to be careful with your mask after church. No touching, no hugging, no kissing. Sounds like I'm raising a bunch of teenagers. What we normally do in our church, not so much on the kissing, but the hugging and, and touching hands, holding, shaking hands, hugging necks and stuff. We're not doing that now. Uh, we want to be careful. We want to respect uh, our, our higher risk people. Everybody said amen. amen. Uh, my brother-in-law, uh, Brother Gene Hawley, has, has gotten COVID, is in the hospital. Uh, I think he got to come home. And uh, what he did, uh, he's a presbyter in his district. They had a board meeting, and now three or four of the presbyters are sick. Brother Tom Foster uh, is sick, very sick. And so, you know, everything's different, and you got to be a little more careful. I mean, what could be better than having a board meeting. I mean, no, not really. You, you don't want to be on the board. Um, I was on the board 10 years enough for us all. Anyhow, but doing an honorable thing, the thing to do, and then they, they get sick. They didn't know they were sick. So we're just going to have to, we're not going to live in fear. We're not going to live in fear. I don't go as much. I've turned some things down uh, on flying traveling um, but I'm not living in fear and uh, I'm trying to be careful and if I get if I get it then we'll deal with it we'll see what the Lord has amen, amen. I'm not going to die from it and you're not either I, I already fixed that praise God I mean God did amen but this is going to be a deal don't listen to the news too much. They're full of the devil. Oh, I feel good saying that. They all need the Holy Ghost. Fox needs the Holy Ghost. MSNBC, NBC, CBS, ABC, ZPQ, all of them. They all are full of the devil. And they're trying to manipulate you. And they're trying to run your life. Don't let the media run your life. Let Jesus run your life. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. So I, I, the, you remember that. I'm not just picking on them. They, need a, they don't need to be picked on. They need a swift kick. But anyhow... You don't be affected by it. Just limit your news consumption. I feel good saying that. I've had to turn it off. It's always negative. 
you got, yeah, something. Maybe not the Flintstones, I don't know, but anyhow. Anyhow, stay, uh, stay focused on the Lord. Now I want us to worship God for about a minute and a half. I want you to put your hands up, praise the Lord, clap your hands, lift up your voice, open up your heart, open up your lungs, give God praise. Always glad to give the Lord praise. Always glad to lift up His name. We live in perilous times, but Lord, You're the God that sits on the circle of the earth. Hallelujah! 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 In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! Oh, we praise the Lord with all of our heart. All of our soul, all of our strength, all of our might. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Doesn't that feel good? Let's clap our hands unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Come on. Unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. I give applause. Unto the Lord. I shout hallelujah. Unto the Lord. I glorify His name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I've been thinking about the folks that haven't been able to come back to church. Uh, Sister Gracie uh, Combs, Sister Lisa hasn't been able to come back very often. Sister Lena, Sister Lena was going to get baptized right before COVID hit. And uh, I haven't seen or heard from her. Sister Lena, give me a call. Let me know how you're doing. Sister Elaine Reisman uh, hasn't been able to be back. We love and appreciate her. Sister Clarissa, Sister Clarissa, uh, she moved and she can't come, so she's watching online. And but we haven't forgotten her. And uh, Sister Christina, I noticed Sister Christina came tonight. Hasn't been able to come very much. Sister Mylisa is sick, but not with COVID. You know what? People are still getting sick with other things. And uh, uh, people are dying with other things. But it just seems like with COVID, it's always, it's always about COVID. Anyhow, I want to say to all these folks and everybody that is at home tonight watching by way of the web, especially to these sisters, we miss you. We want you to come back, but we understand uh, and we are, we are not condemning you for not being here. We really do miss you. And we're not saying that to put pressure on you. Well, maybe a little bit. But we love you, and we want you to be safe and be well. And if you are at home tonight, you could have come to church, but you are fudging and staying. And, and uh, you say, well, I saw you online. That's not good enough. Remember, I'm going to answer to God for you, so I've warned you. You can backslid sitting at home when you could come to church. I'm not talking to these ladies right here. Uh, but there's a lot of people that, you know, they're, they're taking this. I think I'm not going to go to church no more on Wednesday night. I think I'm just going to, you know, tell Brother Hurst I'm on the web, but not really be on the web. Uh, folks. This church comes to church on Wednesday night. I will not give up on Wednesday night. 
you're going to see a lot of Pentecostal church close their doors on Wednesday night. COVID's going to shut down Wednesday night church. Not here. That was really weak. And I sure didn't hear nobody on the web say amen. So get yourself to church. Be obedient to the man of God. Can I get an amen here? Now, uh, I want to talk to you about vacation. I think if there ever was a year that you need to go on a vacation, this is the year. Uh, this time, last Wednesday night, I was sitting around a campfire. I went out and bought a fake campfire in a pot, a fire in a pot. And, and you have a hose and a butane bottle. And uh, I met a few friends up in the mountains, and we were sitting around talking, laughing, um, talking about the Lord, just chilling out. And it did us a world of good. We was there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, come home Thursday, just three days. But it did us a world of good. It, it, it helped us. It's the first break we've had uh, since all this has come out. And uh, so I just told Sister Hurst, we're going to do, we're going to go a little bit. I haven't got my, my visit out, so I'm going again. Not there, but whatever. I think you need to get away. I think you need to take the time to get out of town. Uh, you don't have to go on a grand vacation. You don't want to take a vacation on credit and spend a bunch of money where you'll have to pay for it for the next 10 years. But you need to go and do. You need a break from this grind. And uh, listen, everybody just smooch on me a little bit. I, I know you love me because I'm so rare of a man of God to encourage you to go on vacation without you feeling guilty. Give it to me, honey. Right. I want you to go. I want you to go. You work Monday through Friday, so most of your time off is going to be on the weekend. So take a weekend or two. And uh, now don't take six or eight. And say, well, I'm up in the mountains, but I'm on the web. That don't cut it. You can't get the web up there anyhow. So, um, God's really going to be nice tonight to everybody at home on the web. But I feel your spirit. It's a backsliding spirit. It's a backsliding spirit. Don't sit there watching TV and go to hell. You need to come to the house again. All right, I'm not talking to you no more. Where was I at? You need to take a vacation. Go up in the mountains, go uh, to the beach, go to the desert. Get away from it all. Man, nobody's saying nothing. I don't want nobody taking a vacation. You really do. You need to get away. Take a weekend, take two weekends. Don't take the weekend we have church anniversary. That's the first week of August, first Sunday of, in August. We're going to have Brother Sam Emery come preach for us that Sunday, Lord willing. So any other weekend besides that, you need to take some time, get out of town, and enjoy yourself. I'm asking you to do one thing. One thing, and that's to show kindness and respect to the pastor and send me a text. Brother Hurst is going to be out of town. We're going to take a week. Um, just so I don't think, well, where are they at? Are they backslid at home watching the web? you gotta, you got to say, we're out of town. Then I don't think about it. Don't worry about it. How many's ever done that for Brother Hurst? How many's ever done it? You feel good about it? No? Yes? You feel like you're showing me respect? And I appreciate that. How many's ever had me call you up and say, don't you dare go out of town? Huh? Huh? What do I say? I say, thank you for letting me know. Standard answer. I've written that so many times, my computer just does it for itself. I hit T and it goes, thanks for letting me know. That's going to be my standard reply. I, I just, if you'll let me know 
when you can't come to the house of God, I believe that you will be back and you'll be rested and you'll be better for your uh, getting away from it. It's important. I don't feel like you're listening to me. I said it's important. And if you, well, Brother Hurst, if I miss a weekend, I'm backslid. Then you're backslid already. A weekend's not going to kill you. Amen. Boy, all of a sudden I'm picking up backsliding vibes here. Say, Lord, drive that backsliding spirit out of me. I don't want nothing to do with it. We've come so far. We are almost crossing the finish line. This would be the world's worst time to lose out with God. Shake yourself. Stir yourself. Stand up and praise the Lord. Involve yourself in the work of God. Put yourself into this. Take yourself out of the role of a spectator and become a participator in what God is doing today. Hallelujah. I'm fighting for you. Amen. Don't say I just wish Brother Hurst wasn't so sensitive to the Holy Ghost. You want me to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. You want me to pick up on the spirit that's tempting you. Amen. That doesn't mean I've stopped loving you. I love you. I've seen you at your worst, and I've seen you at your best. And I love you anyhow. And God saw you at your worst and decided to die for you and to shed his blood for you. And if God's on your side, I'm going to be on your side. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. He cut talabakaya. Raise your hands and speak in tongues. Let the Holy Ghost come upon you. Glory to God. Woo! Oh, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Devil, you ain't going to get me now. You're not going to pull me down now. I've lived for God and fought too many devils and walked through too many valleys, climbed too many mountains to fall by the way now. I'm crossing the finish line. I'm crossing the finish line. I'm going to come out of this valley. I'm going to live to see a better day. Woo! Huh. Don't count your chickens, brother. I am going to live for God. And I believe this church is going to live for God. We're going to stay faithful, stay focused. So... You send me a text, and uh, that's all I'm asking. That's all I'm requiring. That and don't go on uh, church anniversary Sunday. The rest of the Sundays are wide open, and uh, I'm encouraging you to go. And don't feel bad and won't feel bad if you are absent. Everybody said amen. amen. Say, oh, thank you, Brother Hurst. You're so sweet. You're so nice. You're so kind. I grew up. Uh, in a church that you always got guilted for going. And uh, it was always like you'd kind of halfway sin if you decided to go out of town. That's no fun. That's not the way it ought to be. You ought to be able to go and go guilt-free. Now, if you go and get drunk or, you know, go to a, something that you shouldn't do or do something you shouldn't do or hang out with people you shouldn't hang out, that's on you. I heard about some people that had a 500-mile rule. You don't do certain things within 500 miles of home, but if you got over 500 miles from home, then you could do things. That's ridiculous. God's everywhere. It's not just the church. Don't let this building be your conscience. Amen? The Holy Ghost is everywhere. Amen. All right, let's praise God. Let me see if I can shake this thing here and we can get into teaching the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Now we are on soul winning. I'm going to teach on soul winning for a little bit tonight. This is the second installment. This, 
We're going to be on page 51 in our books. You have your books tonight. If you don't have a book, Sister Hurst, do you have some available? We, we have anybody that doesn't have a book. She's got about a half a dozen down here. And you can come down and pick one of the books up so you will have notes. And then give Sister Hurst $12 after church. I have one at home. You can buy another one. You want to borrow it? Yeah, $6. God bless you. No, go ahead. Nine dollars. Okay. Just kidding. All right, we're going to be on page fifty-one. We're going to be glad to have our guests that are here tonight. We're we're glad that they're here, and we pray that the Lord will bless them. I I also have uh, fifty-one is where we're going to be at. We're going to start hold the scripture until I ask for it on John chapter fifteen. That's going to be our beginning start. Uh, I asked uh, for you to write some things down. I've got several people that wrote. Uh, very interesting, very interesting uh, uh, observations here. Um, um, outreach homework. What have you done uh, in the way of soul winning? Um, here's somebody, I won't give the name, but uh, it said I was kind to everyone I met. I treated them with genuine respect, and uh, I listened to them with focused attention. And they said, people can spot indifference a miles away. People don't open up and trust fake people. It's good. And then number four was read one and one through three again. That's pretty good. And then this person said, I pray for kindness and sensitivity to the Holy Ghost. I set up a tentative Bible study with uh, somebody and then I reconnected with five people who have stopped coming to church that's good that's soul winning that's good I met with a friend uh, for breakfast on Saturday we talked about the goodness of the Lord openly other customers were listening so were his kids and then uh, I reconnected with a co-worker about life we ended up talking about God's blessing and I invited him to church so that is, that's a good, uh, that's a good thing. You can't go wrong treating people with kindness and respect and really paying attention to them when they start talking. Pastor, this week I rebuked the spirit of the, I, I'm not sure, uh, I rebuked the spirit of the ring out of my sister's mouth at a family gathering. I'm not sure what the ring is. R-I-N-G. I'll have to get a little clarification on that. Maybe it was the spirit of fussing and fighting. You better watch rebuking your sister at a family gathering. Usually that's a losing proposition. Here's a better way. I let my light and calmness that God provided with me with at work and home shine. So that's pretty good. Brother Hurst, this week I showed love and encouragement to a family member who was fearful. I prayed for her and sent her a text of words of kindness through calls and messages. So that's good. There's all kind of ways to be a soul winner. There's one in here that really caught my attention. Uh, several really good uh, different expressions here um, hang on I want to get to this one Thursday uh, nothing I was just a Christian well that's better than being a sinner Friday I talked to an uncle about church a little bit but I didn't really witness knowing who this uncle is he knows about as much living for God as you do Saturday nothing Sunday just had church well could have said something about my sermon. <laughs> Monday, nothing. Tuesday, nothing. Uh, went, uh, uh, went to church, but before church, nothing. Then at the end of that, it says, this really shows me how little I witness to people and actually talk to them. Well, that's honest. Here's somebody, soul-winning uh, journal. 
Bible study, reading, prayer, Bible study, reading. Well, that's not soul winning, but that's personal winning. Then I watch some Christian videos with the girls, and I explain to them and, and had questions and engaged them to develop their understanding. On June 13th, I encouraged my cousin to read a Bible passage. The Lord will, and we, we will begin a Bible study soon. That's good. Then I brought somebody to church. Uh, service, leading by example in prayer, praise, and worship. That's soul winning. And then that cousin that he encouraged to read the Bible read in Exodus regarding the Ten Commandments, and he texted me with a few comments. So I began to explain what he had read being the Ten Commandments, which he wasn't familiar with. Isn't that crazy? That's the world we live in. So he called me and asked me more questions, which turned into a 42-minute Bible study about God being a jealous God and the meaning of, of giving of the Ten Commandments through Moses and the plagues of Egypt and the Lord's Passover and Exodus of Israel and out of Egypt and thank you, Jesus. You ought to get a certificate for that. And then on June 16th, prayer, Bible reading, study. And prayer, Bible reading, study. That's good. It's taking advantage, being uh, faithful in your personal walk with God. That's the first thing. If our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. If you're not right and somebody asks you about something, you immediately go, oh, I can't witness. I'm not living for God like I should. But if, if you're living for God like you should, somebody asks you a question, you go, oh, this is a chance to win somebody to the Lord. Amen? If our heart condemn us not, how do we do that? We live for God. We keep the victory. How do we keep the victory? Prayer, Bible reading. Amen? This week I participated in soul winning by simply talking to my coworkers. With everything that's going on in the world, I talked about why the church has been able to stay strong in the middle of all of this. They were surprised that I hadn't given in to fear. Uh, this is timely witnessing. Oh, the spirit of fear is in the world. Spirit of fear is coming at you from every angle. I have to rebuke it just nearly every day. And that's not usually one of my things, having to rebuke fear. But I'm rebuking fear nearly every day. So I know it's out there. So I haven't given in to fear. And uh, I could uh, feed them, prodding them and testing if I could withstand difficult questions. Well, I, I'll have to read that again later. But I was also able to answer everything by backing it up with a word. And, and I talked about my ex personal experiences God has done for me. Excellent. Excellent. Now, there's some of these that are testimonies. I mean, they're really good testimonies. Here's somebody who says, During this past week, I was able to have a couple of times to be a witness and to share the truth to people. I was able to talk to one of my co-workers about the doctrine. That's serious. I gave him a church card. Well, praise God. That, they're not out there just for the holder. Oh, look, those are in the holder. Take them home. Hand them out. You'd be surprised how God can use a church card. Somebody put it down, put it in a pocket, and reach into their pocket at a time when they're really needing a word from the Lord and see that church card and say maybe I ought to go to church people have all kind of signs this is a sign we'll put a little sign in their hand uh, gave him a church card and was able to convey to him how our church isn't judgmental that regardless of his knowledge of the Bible he wouldn't be judged for his beliefs that one church wasn't, that our church wasn't going to argue with him and shame him. Instead, we would love him and help him on his journey 
to understanding the truth. That sounds like somebody's thinking about coming to church. In the next instance, I was able to invite a friend uh, to service the uh, following Sunday. So that's a good, that's uh, good. If you have a pen and you're taking notes, write this down. If you haven't, I've already told you this, but I want to tell you again. In soul winning, timing is everything. Soul winning, timing is everything. So important to have an answer. Have an answer for the hope that liest within you. What I did to be a witness this week, I dressed, talked, and walked. Uh, I dressed, that's good, talked and walked separate from the world. No matter who I was around, I made sure to reach out to my friends who are backsliders and that are not in the church and to keep in touch. And uh, like Naaman, I think. That, and, and when I'm around them, I don't change who I am. And I was open with them about who I am and, and uh, staying in the church a few times. Uh, and with my friend who has been to church a few times and will hopefully come back, even when his mom feels uh, fear about him leaving the house, I've made sure he has, uh, was able to listen on the live session feeds and made an effort. That's great. Give them the website. It's a start. It's not where you need to end up, but it's a start. Don't get me on the web. Hi, everybody. And made an effort to make sure he knows I'm praying for him. That's good. Does anybody feel like this is corny? No. If you do, uh, then you don't soul win. This is great right here. This is a personal testimony. I'm going to save that and that, that one was for me. Everybody knows who this is because it's blue. So you know who wrote it. That, that, my brother, is special. I mean, what he said is good for you, but I ain't going to tell you. Because it's about his testimony. Excellent. I'm going to preach on that some other time. One more. Everybody said amen. Amen. Make sure to notice praise report on number 10. So obviously we have 10 points here. Uh, I'm teaching a Bible study on Tuesdays and Thursdays to a, and then gave the name. That's good. I'm encouraging and following up regarding Wednesday and Sunday church attendance with her, this person that she's teaching a Bible study to, being a friend and checking up on health challenges. Since she has been ill, I presented her with a prayer cloth. That's a good way to be a soul winner. Get a prayer cloth, have it anointed and prayed over, and go to them and say, listen, I had this prayed for, and when you touch it, God's going to touch you and heal you, and uh, you're going to feel better. Don't hand it to them and say, well, you're going to get sicker. Presented her with a prayer cloth. Great idea. Shared personal stories of God's miraculous healing, how he has touched my family. Everybody say your personal testimony is your most powerful tool. Greeted, and I'm, I greet and I am friendly to passerbys on my daily walks. Was actually able to help an older woman who had locked herself out of her house. Had been locked out for two hours. She won't forget that. Started conversations with those that were receptive to my presence. I pray for people I have met in my walks as I pass their house on my daily walk. I freely share how good God has been to me whenever the opportunity presents itself. Timing is everything. Sometimes you don't need to say nothing, just be. I gave God glory to my friends and family and testified about financial blessings. Watch this. How many has God blessed financially here recently? Look at this. 
Look at this. Hold it up there. Hold it up there. Look around. People's losing jobs. People's losing all kind of things. Look at the church. Is God taking care of you? That's something to talk about. How the Lord is blessing you in the midst of this deal. Don't be afraid to say, well, I'll jinx it. You can't jinx God. Clean up your language. You're a child of God. You don't go around saying jinx and throwing salt over your shoulder and knocking on wood. I do that sometimes, God forgive me. Stupid, superstitious, super, superstitious. Feel a judgmental spirit out there. Give glory to God. Reach out, get, get, reach out to Sister so-and-so by phone and text. We really connected at the parking lot service, and she shared how much she was missing spiritual encouragement and fellowship. That's awesome. I plead the blood and pray for my lost family members. You're strongest on your knees. Number 10, we was waiting for number 10. Prayers answered. Oldest granddaughter received the Holy Ghost on Sunday the 14th. She was 10 years old. So there's people, there's people out in this audience that are truly trying to be soul winners. Your biggest opportunities will be presented to you by the Holy Ghost. But you will not be ready for them if you don't have the victory. Amen? Now we're going to open this up. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to go a full hour from now. But we are going to go about another 30. Uh, uh, my text is going to be from John 15 because we've, we've now got into soul winning, what it is, the best ways, the most effective ways. But now let's look what Jesus says because this is pretty heavy duty. He said, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So that that's should catch our attention. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. Now we know that we're talking about productivity here. Productivity. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purge, purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Everybody say, we can always do better. Now ye are clean through the word, which what I have spoken unto you. Abide, and that's a very powerful thought right there. Now, now ye are clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you. There's another scripture in the Bible that talks about uh, by the washing of water by the word. Being in the presence of Holy Ghost preaching washes your spirit, cleans up your spirit. Isn't that wonderful? Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide me. So whatever we get done for God, of course, that always goes back to giving glory to God. God gets all the praise, God gets all the glory. But we're okay with that, because we wouldn't be saved without the Lord anyhow I am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit so there's the edict there is the standard he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much everybody say much, much. for without me ye can do nothing but with me ye can do much fruit so if you are not, so if you're not bringing forth fruit, then you're not in the Lord. Yeah, right, right. right? Is that what, that's the conversely however. Yes, there are seasons of life. Yes, there are times when the vine is uh, not budding or having fruit hang from its bough. But there should be also as consistent as times of dormancy, there should be fruitfulness. 
Uh, for without me you can do nothing. In verse 6, if a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. I heard something the other day about somebody that used to come to church here uh, half-heartedly. They would show up every couple of weeks, and uh, they would come to church. They never really had the victory. They never really made a commitment to living for God. And they would come in, and we would love on them and, and uh, try to include them, and they would sometimes come and pray. This went on for a couple of years. But here's the deal. Listen to me. You cannot indefinitely live around the church like that. The devil's not going to let that one go. You cannot just bobble around the church. You've got to fight to stay in the church. You've got to be aggressive to stay connected to the vine. Now these people are totally backslid. And they are doing things that I will not even mention. Just a year or two ago, they was coming. They had paid their tithes. They had come about once every couple of weeks. Now, they're doing things that are totally out there. And if we stop them and could interview them, say, sit down, we want to talk to you. These things that you're doing, they would say, I, I never thought I'd do that. He that abideth not in me. Everybody say, in me. You can't just stay around God. You've got to get, oh, I'm, I'm in the Holy Ghost here. You've got to get connected to God. You can't just bounce in and bounce out and say, well, I'm in and yippee and yep, now I'm out, boo-hoo. You're being a fool. You're being silly. Don't mess with God. This is not some religious little game that you play. This is matters of heaven and hell. This is matters of life and death. You can backslide and pick up seven devils in an instant. I want to be in God. I want God in me. I don't, I don't want to think, well, am I in or out? If I'm up or down, if I'm prayed through, get over that. Pray through and stay prayed through. Plug in and stay plugged in. I'm going to tell you something. There's a backsliding spirit that I'm after tonight. Here I am again. And I'm not just, this is not in my notes, but I'm telling you, you don't want to mess with that. You don't want to flirt with that. I had a girl, I dreamed about her uh, a couple nights ago. I'm trying to think. I think when I was out of town. I hadn't thought about her in years. Not in years. Girl I pastored in Texarkana. She uh, turned 18. She kind of been around the church. We had a real good uh, youth program and she liked to go with the young people and every once in a while she'd pray through she never really plugged in and when she came into my study she said brother Hurst I am telling this because I love you and respect you I'm going to backslide and I'm going to go out in the world and I'm going to try the world but I'll be back and I just I really love you and this is not please don't take this personal I just need to see how the other half lives. She is a real pretty girl. A real pretty girl. Last I heard, she was a prostitute. Strung out on drugs. Selling her body for, to feed her habit. Don't say you can do what you want to do and get away with it. As far as I know, she's never come back to God. And that was, that was 20 years ago. I don't want to be around Christ. I want to be in Christ. And I want to be, I want it to be evidenced 
by manifesting fruit. Now, uh, let's talk about this fruit bearing. Now, Brother Brandon talked about the fruit of the Spirit. If you read the list in Galatians 25, or Galatians 5, 22 and 23, in the King James, the word kindness is not in there. But there are words that could be turned into kindness. I feel like kindness should be one of the fruit of the Spirit. God, what's the deal? Um, huh? House rule. Yeah, I got it. I didn't repeat it. It wasn't that good. But anyhow, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for trying. I appreciate it. I don't need. It. <laughs> I got all kind of help tonight. I'm talking about bearing the fruit. Now, let me, let me talk about the fruit of the Spirit is part of this. Don't talk to me about you living for God when you're hateful. And you can't say nothing nice. And you're always critical. And you're always demeaning your husband or your wife or yourself. You ought to be nice to yourself. Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, I'm so ugly. You're going to try to talk God out of loving you? He loves you. You ought to try loving yourself a little bit. A lot of times that's false humility. You're saying ugly things about yourself, so we'll say something nice about you. That's the wrong way to go about it. Just, just do your best. People that love you are going to love you. Who cares about your nose? Who cares about your face? There's not that many pretty people in California. Mm -mm. All the ugly people in California. We're, we're safe here. We don't have to be stand out beautiful. This is a melting pot. Somebody says, uh, well, I thought that made for beautiful people. It, no. Mm -mm. No, it don't. But I love you. Ugly and all. Your, your worth is not in how much you weigh. Your worth is not in how beautiful or not so beautiful you are. Your worth is in the value of your soul. Your personhood. So, come one, come all. Ugly and all. We will love you. Ugly people. You'll fit right in. You don't have to have surgery to come to our church. No Botox necessary. Oh, I'm preaching so good. Just come on. The Lord loves you. I tried to, uh, when I first started pastoring, I tried to talk to people about their weight. I got over that real quick. I found out the anointing doesn't extend to the pounds and the inches. I love them big and small. Just come to God. Everybody said amen. amen. So the fruit of the Spirit's part of this, but there is also part of, listen to me, soul winning. If you're living for God, you can't help but affect somebody positive. You are going, the Holy Ghost in you, the light of the Holy Ghost in you, the the love of God, the fire that Jeremiah talked about, shut up in my bones. It's got to come out. It's going to come out. And you are going to affect somebody and encourage somebody and uplift somebody. You can't stop yourself from that. Everybody said amen. And if you don't have that, you're not connected. It's an either or. Well, I, 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 I think I'm in. I think, no, quit thinking. It's like being pregnant. You either are or you're not. You're either connected or you're not. Somebody's like, who, who got pregnant? Now, your, your level of um, fruit production. Write some notes here. Your level of fruit production has a lot to do with when you pray through. 
All right? If you pray through at 70, um, you know, you've, you've lived for the devil for 70 years, and you got 70 years promised, you know, so you're not going to set the world on fire, but you can be saved. If you pray through, uh, let's see, let's say you pray through, you got 10 kids from 10 different men. Well, I would say the best thing you can do is try to win those kids to God. Focus on those 10 kids. Try to witness to them. Try to get them to come to church. I mean, if you have 10 kids, you can't get much else done. You've been pregnant for a decade. Talk about being pregnant. <laughs> so you're not going to be able to teach a lot of Bible studies. You're not going to have a lot of time because you've got 10 kids. And, and if you hadn't married somebody, then you're going to probably, it's going to take everything to keep your family fed and clothed. And you don't have a whole lot of time left. By the time you say goodnight, John boy. Good night, Sister Sarah. Good night, Willie P. You know, you're not going to have a lot of time left. So your, your level of fruit production soul winning, like I said the last time I taught, save your children. So, well, what about those people that go out and blow their mind? I passed a guy today, and uh, he was sitting on the side of the street, and... I drove by and he said, God bless you, sir. The last guy, he cussed. But anyhow, he said, God bless to me. I'm glad he blessed me instead of cursed me. But you could tell his, his mind was blown on drugs. Now, does God heal people that are... Uh, I've seen God help people. I've seen people come that were just flat out weird. Look, we're in California. You're all weird. Ugly, weird, uh, th th those are givens. Did Brother Hurst just call me ugly? Not me. Californians are weird. Listen, we're dealing with people whose grandparents were hippies. I mean, we're going evolutionary backward. People's got all kind of hangups. And, and did I, in one of these things, uh, somebody said, I talked to him about the Ten Commandments. And he said, I don't know what that is. That's how ignorant people are about God. When you say, well, you can't do that. That's in the Bible. They're like, can I smoke it? They don't know what the Bible is. Everything they know about, oh, I watched, I watched a movie about uh, Noah's Ark. And so I know all about Noah's Ark. No. If Hollywood has touched it, it's corrupted. Don't trust anything about the Bible that comes out of Hollywood. Nothing. Well, I feel somebody go, oh, well, what about the robe? What about the chalice? What about Ben-Hur? Please. Everybody said amen. amen. Brother Hurst don't like TV very much, does he? Yeah. Some of you watch TV way too much. You spend too much time and you never read the Bible. No wonder you, you believe the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I've never seen the Raiders. I, I remember everybody got interested in Noah's Ark. When the, is that the movie about the Raiders of the Lost Ark? Nobody wants to say anything. Is that, that's not about Noah's Ark? Well, it's an ark. How many arks are there? Oh, please. The next thing, you're going to say it's a Star Wars thing. Oh, God. I've never watched, I'm so glad on the, you know, I've never watched a Star Wars movie, never will watch a Star Wars movie. Matt thinks that's a blasphemy, but, you know. I've never watched The Three Rings or The Lord of the Pigtails or something. Never have it. It's like 7-Up. Never have, never will. You could have six COVIDs. I'm not watching that. How did we get on my TV habits here? You're the one with the problem. I'm talking about 
how much fruit you should manifest. Now, here's the deal. If you live for God as a child and you'll get in the church as a young person, you're going to bring forth a lot of fruit. A lot of it's just about timing and, and, and how much baggage you bring. Just because you pray through, you don't get rid of your baggage. Come on, don't get all down in the mouth. That, that's why the scripture said some people are going to do 30. Their level of productivity is about 30%. Some, some's going to be 60. Some's going to be 100. Very rare. Very rare. I've pastored a long time. Very rare. Count on one hand how many people are 100%. But you have to produce fruit. Here. Well, Brother Hurst, I, you know, I got to go to work and I got to pay the rent and, and, and I've got an unsaved husband and I got a daughter that has kids that I try to have. Well, I get it. I get that. You're busy. You, you're doing things. Your level of spiritual productivity, you're not going to be able to go out knocking on doors. You're not going to have that time. Soul winning takes time. Now, here's something that's very important about soul winning. Write this down. Soul win where you live. Soul win where you're at. Don't have a separate place. Okay, this is my soul winning field. You don't have that kind of time. Witness where you live, where you work. You, look, there's three things in your life that are you divide your life into thirds. You sleep a third, you work a third, and everything else a third. Well, you can't win your bed. I said, oh, I want to win my bed. My bed's wonderful, Brother Hurst, my bed. I'm happy for you. Every man needs a good bed, a good car, and a good pair of shoes. Because if you're not in one, you're in the other. You could write that down. It's not original with me, but it does make sense. See, I'm in my shoes. I would say I'm in pants, but that's a little personal. And I have a coat that's green. Sister Hurst approved of it. It's my Father's Day gift. I digress. I'm going to get in the bed. But there's not a lot of soul winning that goes on in the bed. Boy, nobody is saying nothing right now. No, I know what's going on in your mind. Anyhow, so the third part of your life, if you can't win souls while you're sleeping, and you can't win souls uh, at work, then you only have one third of your life to try to win souls. So learn how to be a soul winner on your job. Does that make sense? How much, how much fruit are you bearing? Can you say, can you say, somebody said, why are we doing this? We're taking a time to do an apostolic review. Is soul winning in the Bible? Is being a soul winner in the is being a witness in the Bible, or is this just a thing for brother? You know, brother Hurst just wants to have a big church, so he's trying to convince us all to go out and win people to God, so we can have a big church. Is this a brother Hurst thing, or is this a Bible thing? That's why we're doing the review. If it's in the book, we ought to focus on it. If it says we ought to bear fruit, tell me about your fruit. Well, I, 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 no, you know when you've produced something, spoke a word, encouraged somebody, sent a text, called somebody, had an answer for somebody. Anybody going to say amen? amen? That ought to go on consistently. Mm, raise your hands and pray. God, help me, Lord. I got to do this consistently. Come on, let's pray about it. God, we got to get this. Soul winning's a lifestyle. 
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses. Look at this. Both in Jerusalem. Everybody say Jerusalem. That's home. Judea. That's surrounding home. Samaria, that's away from home and out of town and unto the uttermost parts of the earth, wherever you go. But you always start in Jerusalem. You always start where you're at. Turn to your neighbor and say, start where you're at. Start where you're at. Now, can you do this without smirking? Turn them and say, encourage me. Win me. Help me live for God. Husbands, are you an encouragement to your wife or a drag to your wife? Spiritually. Spiritually. Wives, are you an, are you an encouragement to your children? Moms, to your children? Do you, do you, does your kids want to do better because mom is showing them how to be graceful and kind and loving? I mean, they still have to pick up their socks, you know. They still have to take a shower and brush their teeth. We had Isaac over the other night, didn't want to brush his teeth, you know. No, you have to brush your teeth. And, and then it's like, one, two, spit. <laughs> I've seen Rhonda send him back. No, mm -mm. did your spit blue or white? I don't have to explain that to you, right? If you spit blue toothpaste, it didn't really get the job done. Well, I, you know, I just, the kids drive me to distraction. Well, what do you want them to do? Go to hell? You got it. You're raising them. You're trying to help them live for God. You're not always going to have them. You better put the Word of God in them. You better get them and encourage them and teach them and, and, and talk to them about when they have a move of God. When there's a service, that's a perfect time to say, well, what do you think about church? Did you get something from the Lord? And let them talk to you in their childish way. Do you know uh, there were five of us in uh, our family? Gary was the oldest, I was second. Cindy, Randy, and Teresa came later as the baby. And... It, we didn't have minivans. They hadn't invented minivans. They had station wagons where you had to crawl over the third seat and the second seat to get out, and we always had somebody getting their hands slammed in the door because when Gary would get out, he'd always shut the door. You know, Fingers, I grew up with fingers like that. What happened? Gary was my older brother. So somebody... And, and there, you could get lost in the crowd. Is anybody listening to me? You could get lost in the crowd with five kids. But I want to tell you something. When I got a touch from God, when I prayed as a little kid, little, and little kids don't pray all the time. They don't have the capacity to pray all the time. They're not going to speak in tongues every service. They're not going to be interested in the service every service. But every once in a while, God's going to get them. Every once in a while, the Spirit's going to come by and touch them. Come on, preach with me. And you've got to capitalize on that. And when I would pray through, that means I was touched. I cried a little bit. I would go down to the altar. I remember this. I would always watch my dad because he would always pray for me. Oh, God. And I would always kind of follow him around like, here, here. Here, I wanted him to touch me. I wanted him to put his hand on my head. When he put his hand on my head, it come down over my face. But it was wonderful, the man of God. He wasn't my dad then. He was the man of God. And when I would pray, which was very rarely, and Gary's over there making snarky remarks, but he very rarely prayed. Okay. So uh, he needed 
more. Anyhow, we're, we're not going to go with that spirit. Uh, I would always want to sit with mom in the front seat. So there had to be a lot of maneuvering to get Teresa, the little twerp, the baby of the family. But I'd find a way to get in between mom and dad in the station wagon and get Teresa and Randy wherever he went. I wanted to sit next to mom. I wanted to be next to mom. And I would snuggle up to her in the front seat. And I was like, I would whisper to her, Mom, I think God's calling me to preach. This is when I was a kid. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And she'd reach over and she'd, Oh, Nady Bo, I believe you're going to be a great man of God. She'd whisper that. You don't want to cast your pearls before the swine in the back. <laughs> if Gary would have heard that, he would have went, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, the next, <laughs> the next service, I wasn't in the altar. I had snuck outside and was already doing laps around the church. Are, are making snowballs with Sister Norwood's new leather gloves. I mean, I was a kid. I was, you know, a little brat. But every once in a while, I'd tag in. And when I did, that was my system. And then I want that approval of my mother. And I'd say, Mom, don't laugh at me. Gary, is Gary talking about me right now? I rebuked that spirit over there. It worked. I don't know if I'm great, but I'm a man of God. Hallelujah. Every once in a while. Are you listening to me? The mom didn't go into a long deal. You know, praying for me. It wasn't time to pray. I'd have been like, Mom. She was time to pray. Oh, Nate. I believe God's got his hand on you, son. And then she'd just let me be a boy, and I'd sit in the back with the heathens. Until the next time I got a touch from God and Teresa's got to go in the back because I wanted to sit next to mom. Somebody said, what are you trying to say? My mother won my soul. You think she got anything done for the kingdom of God? Yeah? Win souls where you live. Put yourself out where you live. We talk about the power. We say, oh, you shall receive power from the Holy Ghost. Ha, 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 ha. That's not exactly what that's all about. Glad you can go, ha, ha, ha. You shall be witnesses. That's as emphatic in the writing as the power. For we cannot speak those things which we have. We cannot. This is Acts chapter 420. We'll try it reading it the third time. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Now folks, if this was a bad church, you might have a reason to go, oh, I don't want you to come to my church. It's boring. But this church has revival. We have moves of God all the time. Amen. This story right here, this is a personal testimony. He makes a statement, how bad he was and all that. Blah, blah, blah. And he said, it wasn't until the day I finally accepted the invitation to come to TPC from my girlfriend at the time that I realized that there was something very different from what I was used to. As I watched in wide-eyed curiosity, I listened to all the people praising God with such an excitement. It was kind of a wow moment. And as I continued to attend church, I caught myself listening more intently to what was being preached. 
and what I didn't understand, I would go home and get out my Bible and actually read it to better understand it more clearly. And I was really starting to like the church thing. Later on, he says something nice about me. But you know what, you know what put a hook in his jaw? You know what got his curiosity? There was a move of God in the house. There was people praising the Lord. There was people worshiping God. You won him before I ever got to him. Come on now. It was your praise. It was your worship. It was your prayer room that you brought from the prayer room into the sanctuary that caught that person's attention. I had a man tell me, this is different man. I had a man tell me this a long time ago, way many years ago. I said, well, what, what got your attention? And he said like that. He said, I'll tell you what got my attention. He said, you know that little girl called Victoria, Victoria something? I said, Victoria Soria. He said, yes, her. I said, yeah, what about her? She shook my hand and smiled at me and said, we're glad to have you here. He said, I was so impressed by that. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. There are people in the church today because of that smile and that handshake and that kind word. They're in the house tonight. I'm talking about multiple family members. That's so winning. That's stepping out of your comfort zone and being real with somebody. Being kind. Mm, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I want to have great church. I want to have great church so I can get a blessing. I want to have great church so you can get a touch from God. But I want to have church because there's sinners and there's backsliders and there's people coming that don't know about God and they deserve to feel... Oh, somebody shout hallelujah! Woo! Hallelujah! Ah. Amen. I'm going to tell you, before revival came to the church that I was raised in, it was droughts at times. Droughts. And, I, and, and it's not because they didn't love God. It's not because Dad didn't pray. It's not because it's just that they was doing the best they could. And in 84, uh, not 84, 74, in 74, God broke out. And, and they broke into a revival. And it was different after that. Uh, but, but before that, long periods where there was no victory, there was no shouting, there was no worship. It was just performing. It was just going through the paces. I know that they wanted better. I just, I think that they didn't know how. It was doing the best they could. There's a lot of people that live for God in churches like that. You don't, you don't believe that. Go home, get on Facebook, and go through. What is that noise? The chairs? Yeah, yeah, oh, the chairs talking in tongues or something? Okay. All kind of great things going on around here. Uh, <laughs> no? That would be $155. Hallelujah. All right. Well, whatever I was saying, I lost it, so we might as well quit. We want to have a move of God. We know how to have a move God. Does that make us better? Does that make us better than other churches that are just going through the motions? Does that make them bad? Does that make us smarter? Does that make us more blessed? I'll tell you something. You need to thank God for the kind of church you have. Because they're not on every block. And I'm talking about big churches, medium churches, small churches. Not everybody knows how to have church. Hmm. 
here we know how to have church. I, I, I'm not saying I have all the answers and I don't know every theological question in the Bible. I know most of them. And I don't have all the wisdom in the world, but I have the wisdom that I need. But I will tell you right now, and listen to me when I say it, I know how to have church. And that's what grows the church, is having church. So you've got something to talk to somebody about tomorrow. Have you felt God in this service tonight? Has God spoke to you in this service tonight? Did you receive a blessing in this service tonight? Then you've got something to talk about. Let's lift our hands and praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and press a little bit. Press in there. Press in there. Glory to God. Mm. Jesus. So we're going to be soul winners. If you're not a soul winner, say, I'm going to be a soul winner. I'm going to win souls. I'm going to be kind. I'm going to shake hands. Don't shake hands. Bump elbows. I'm going to text. I'm going to... I'm going to give words of encouragement. I, I'm going to be smiling, shaking, don't shake hands, uh, and saying nice things to people. Where's the parking lot crew? Get back out there. I want the parking lot crew out there. Come on, parking lot crew. Some lie got told, said I didn't like the parking lot crew. Love the parking lot crew. Want you out there. Waving at people, telling them that we're glad that they're in the house of the Lord. Everybody that tries will be a soul winner. All you have to do is try, you will succeed. Oh, hallelujah. Well, now, so, okay, I could do more, but did you get it? So, do you believe soul winners in the Bible? So when Brother Hurst says we need to have revival, we need to have, be baptizing more people, we need to have the church grow, we, need, we got too many yellow seats, we need bodies in those seats. Yeah. Then you know it's not just a brother, oh, Brother Hurst wants us to win souls so we can have a big church. No, it's in the Bible. We are to witness. Now I want to close with this. You cannot save God saves people. Amen? You are not the Lord. You do not save people. But you can tell them about the Lord. You can talk to about how God has saved you. If you're saved, be plugged in. Be grafted in to the branch. Don't keep making excuses for sin. Don't keep making excuses for failure. Get in the branch. Be the vine. Bear the fruit. Don't be cut down and cast away. You don't want to be like that family that was just here a couple of years ago. If I called out their name, you, everybody would say, oh, yeah, I know. Where are they at now? They're far from God doing things they thought they'd never do. What happened? They have been cut off. Was Brother Hurst, was you ugly to him? Did you run? Didn't run them off. If they came back, would you be nice? Would be nice. Do, they think, do you think they're going to come back? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's unlikely. How would you like me to say that about you? Because do you think anything that I think is important? This is my business. You know, brother so-and-so, brother Hirsch, you think he'll ever come back? I don't know if these people can come back. And if they do come back, their kids will never come back. When the devil gets you in his hand, 
you may want to try to come back and camp. Let's pray right now. God, I want to get in the church. Come on, let's pray. Pray for yourself. Don't pray for that family. Pray for yourself. Oh, God, I want you to keep me, Lord. I want you to keep me from evil. I want you to keep me from the spirit of the world and the spirit of the Antichrist. I want you to keep me from deception. Everybody on the web, you need to be praying right now. Oh, God, don't let me backslide. Don't let me be lost. Help me to love the truth. Help me to love the word. Help me to love going to the house of God. Help me to love the man of God, even when he rebukes me. Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I love you, everyone. Put your mask on. Don't hug necks. Don't don't shake hands. But do be friendly. And stay six feet apart. And if you have fever, please don't come to church. I will see you, Lord willing, on Sunday. Is, there's no choir practice. There is choir practice. Sorry for, no, I'm not going to apologize. You watch way more TV than what I preach. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you for coming. Say, say something to somebody before you leave. <laughs>